Even though we could not gather together uh, this year for a fall open house, we wanted to provide you and your family as much information as we could virtually. And so a little reminder to make sure to visit our virtual preview night webpage. Um, I'm going to share my screen here so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. If you go to our school's website and um, click up in admissions, you'll be able to do a drop down and click on Crusader Virtual Preview. And on this page, um, not only do we offer campus tour videos and all sorts of videos featuring their school and the different buildings, but there's also wonderful videos. Oh, this is a VR video where you can actually drag and click and turn around so you can see the rooms. Um, but we also have some meet a principal sixth grader videos so you can get to know some of the folks in our community. Um, there's wonderful videos highlighting some different academic programs here at the school, as well as some other unique programs that we have, such as the fine arts and student life. And then at the very bottom, there's our admissions 101 information presentation, everything you need to know about our, um, about our application process, as well as tuition and financial aid. And so tonight, the focus won't necessarily be on how to apply or what to do in the application process, um, but if you'd like more of that information, please make sure to watch this video provided there. Um, a last few things uh, of housekeeping. Oh, let's look at our poll real fast. Fantastic. Wow, we have about 75%, oh, 73% of families looking at sixth grade. And many of our families also looking at ninth. We have some 12th grade families. 11th grade families, only one eighth grade family right now, but that's okay, don't worry, you won't be the only one applying. <laughs> okay, sorry, last minute things on housekeeping. Um, quick reminder that our application is open and it opened on October 1st. And so if you haven't done so already, you can start your application and in the whole month of October, the application is free. After that, it'll be $50. And so please take advantage of this time now to start your applications. Um, and then finally, um, our admissions office is open for additional questions and phone calls and Zoom video chats. And so um, as a reminder, as always, we're here to serve you. You know, I think now we've had a few more participants join and we'll have more as we go along. Dr. Book, I think we should get started. What do you think? Sounds good. I'm gonna share my screen here and uh, we'll get going. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, I, I think we should be up and running. I got to actually move this poll uh, out of my way here. So, hey, I want to echo what uh, my Choi just said, and that is really a serious thank you. I know you guys are busy. Your time is valuable. There's a ton of great schools in Las Vegas, and we're honored uh, that you'd spend a little bit of time with us here tonight. I want to spend about 15 minutes sharing with you maybe a little bit at the 30,000 foot level of kind of where we've been and, and where we are currently and, and where I see the school headed uh, kind of out as we look out on the horizon, you know, kind of five to 20 years. And so, uh, but I, I always like to go back and, and look at our beginnings. And let's see, Mr. Orr, I'm hitting the space bar. Oh, there we go. This is where Faith Lutheran started. This is here in Las Vegas. This is at 700 East St. Louis. This was First Southern Baptist Church. And in 1979, we started school here with 43 sixth and seventh graders under the school name Faith Christian Junior Senior High School. We weren't really zeroed in on the Lutheran piece just yet, maybe trying to attract a broader range of people to consider our school. But this, these are my heroes. These are the 43 sixth and seventh graders. You can see a gentleman on, on the right of your screen in a tie, that's Gerhardt Meyer. He uh, and one other teacher started Faith Lutheran. And we were on that campus for two years started to outgrow it by year two. We had already gotten up to 75 students. And so we went way out on East Cheyenne. If you take the 15, like you're going out to the Speedway and get off on Cheyenne and hang a right or go east, about a mile up on East Cheyenne on the left uh, was then Cheyenne Baptist Church. Today, that it's the Salvation Army Church in North Las Vegas. But that's where we were in year three. Then something fortuitous happened. We had a, a, a a member of the faith family, he had twin daughters in, the, in that first class, and he came to us and said, look, I have some land out on the Boulder Highway. It's pretty valuable, uh, but I don't think we want to move our school out there. How about if we go down to Robin Street, which is pretty much down by the Spaghetti Bowl, and we went to this Mormon stake, and we said, listen, if we would give you $1.5 million and all of this land on the Boulder Highway, could we just handshake a deal and move our school into your stake and you guys can start building out on the Boulder Highway? And, and that stake said, sure, we'd be happy to do that. So for 16 years, this was Faith Lutheran. 
from 1982 all the way up to 1998. We averaged about 200 to 250 students uh, when we were on that campus in grades six through 12. Uh, we finally grew in our, in our last year, we got up to almost 400 students on that campus and then made the move to purchase this land out here in Summerlin. Here we are in 1998. Now, just to get your bearings, you are looking due west. So on the left side of your screen is home stretch. That's still there. And on the back side of our school is Sandstone Bluffs. You can see that it didn't even go south of home stretch there. And downtown Summerlin and those neighborhoods, of course, are not even there. You can see the light poles in the distance where the 215 finally went through, but that wasn't there. So Faith Lutheran sat out there in the middle of the desert, and I've talked to any number of people who were at that opening ceremony, at that groundbreaking ceremony in 1998, sitting in a tent out there in the sand, thinking to themselves, who in the world in Las Vegas is going to drive all the way out here to the west side? There is nothing out here. But our forefathers, our board at the time, our leadership at the time, I think had great vision. They knew Summerlin was coming. It was just a matter of time until all of that growth came out to the West. And, and now, of course, we are in what I consider to be the prime piece of real estate for a school uh, in all of the Las Vegas Valley. So we're really, really excited. Today, 1,900 students uh, drive in uh, to come to Faith Lutheran. And this is kind of our campus today in the center. If you look off to your right, there's a 10 acre parcel of just raw desert. I'm actually sitting on that piece of property right now in our new office that we just opened up last week. So we're starting to develop uh, the land across the street and we're looking excitedly into kind of the next five to 20 years, which I'll share in a little bit about some of our plans for the rest of this land. A couple of years ago, my wife and I took a trip to Israel, and we were on the north side of the Sea of Galilee, and, uh, and our coach bus had pulled up, and we tourists are getting off with our cameras and everything, and all of a sudden, a bus pulled up next to us, and off hopped about 50 Israeli soldiers. But what I found interesting, although they were strapped with, you know, heavy machine guns, their shirts were untucked, their t-shirts were hanging out, they were smoking cigarettes, and I looked at our tour guide, and I said, you know, who are these people? And he said, well, they're, they're newly minted members of our military, but after boot camp, what we do is we get them in buses and we drive them around every square inch of this country. They learn the history, they learn the anthropology, they learn the politics, they learn the theology, they learn the archeology, span they learn everything about this country. And then he said something very profound to me. He said, too many soldiers go into battle and they don't know what they're fighting for. Well, we at Faith Lutheran spent some time, I don't know, it was probably 2012, and we rewrote this mission statement. Ours used to be a paragraph long. It sat in three ring binders in the back of my office, and nobody knew it. And we sat down, and we said, let's come up with a mission statement that everyone can memorize and that everybody understands when we wake up every morning why we're coming to battle to fight. And we came up with everyone prepared, everyone saved. See, we want everyone prepared. I want our sixth graders prepared for their geography test on Friday. And I want our football team ready to go once football season starts. And we want our band kids ready for their performances. And we want our eighth graders prepared for high school. We want our high school graduates prepared for university life and life deeper in the 21st century. And so we know we wanna prepare kids. That's what schools do. But we're a Christian school, and I don't apologize for that. And I want everyone saved. And in 1 Timothy 2, 4, it says that God desires all men to be saved. And so we just want to share the greatest news any of us have ever heard, that the God out there who handcrafted the Alps and Red Rock Canyon and the Pacific Ocean, that same God loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus to die for us. And so we want people saved. We want to share the good news of Jesus. We have in the last three years, our seniors have been accepted into over 500 different universities in all 50 states. And so we've had kids get into Yale and Princeton and Stanford and Duke and, and Michigan State and Notre Dame and University of Washington and UNLV and UNR and Chapman and Concordia. I'm so proud that we're preparing kids to get into the school that's the best fit for them. That could be in-state, out-of-state, public schools, private schools, big schools, small schools. And I'm fiercely proud of how this school is preparing kids for life after, after high school. Our vision statement, you know, I laughed. I, I, I came here in 2008, I came to Faith Lutheran. I was a high school principal for three years. And then in 2011, the board asked if I'd step up in the CEO role. And so I've been doing that ever since. And, and what I've always found comical is when people say, you know, especially back then, hey, you know, you just want to be better than Gorman. You want to be better than Meadows. You want to be better than Palo. You want, and I'm just like, listen, our vision statement 
is to be the standard of excellence in Christian education, period. We're not looking to be the best school in Las Vegas. We're not looking to be the best school in Nevada. We're not looking to be the best school in the United States. We want to be the standard of excellence in Christian education. We want to be that school that people from around the world get on airplanes and fly here to find out all of the great things we have going on. And we're already reaping that benefit. We're already seeing that vision. We're not there yet, folks. We got a long way to go. Excellence is a, is a journey, right? It's not a destination. But we do have schools from all over the United States that fly into Las Vegas to look at our middle school and to look at our high school and see what's going on here that's so special and why we're growing so quickly. Just a couple of, I'll just randomly put kids because they're more important than I am. Here, here's a young man working in our film and broadcast studio, uh, getting things uh, ready for class there. So here's a couple of things that we said, well, how are we going to get there? How are we going to be the standard of excellence? Well, we want every student to find his or her place. It's why our academic curriculum is absolutely off the chart. I think I'll share a little bit about that later. It's why the things that we offer after school are unparalleled and unmatched by any school in town. I mean, the opportunities that our middle school and high school have in the arts, in clubs, in athletics, in leadership positions, in, in mission opportunity, it's just, it's just second to none. And we want every kid to be able to find his or her place. And if we don't have his or her place, we have ways that that kid can be a leader to start that group in which he has a passion. I don't want kids going home at three o'clock. Three o'clock to five o'clock, school gets awfully cool. I think school is cool from eight to three, but you ought to see what goes on from three o'clock to five o'clock when kids stay after and get involved in their passion, whether that's in sports, music, drama, the arts, clubs, et cetera. We wanna hire and retain the best. Of course, that's a key, right? We're in a people business. We're only as good as our, as our worst faculty member. And so we are always trying to hire and retain the absolute best faculty we can get our hands on. And I'm fiercely proud of ours. We always say that we're going to create spaces and places for adults and kids to do amazing work. And so we don't build nice facilities because we think they're cool. We build them because we really think the kids do their best work inside these impressive facilities that we have. And then finally, we're going to design room for everyone. I'm quick to say that our mission statement says everyone prepared, everyone safe. When I got here, we had 1,100 kids. But the mission statement doesn't say 1,100 kids prepared, 1,100 kids saved, right? And so if we have demand, we want to keep building so that all of God's kids who want to go to this high school and middle school can be here. Here are our core values. I'm an old dumb football coach from Texas, so I had to use the word faith so I wouldn't forget it right. But what are the five things that this school cares deeply about to the very essence of our being? We care about faith. We care about Jesus. We care about academics. I mean, this is a school after all. We owe you a world-class education. We care about innovation. Jonathan Orr is on the call. He's our director of innovation and continuous improvement. I think faith is always trying to be not just on the cutting edge, but we're willing to get out on the bleeding edge and be the first to market to do some very unique things. We care about the truth. That's God's word. And finally, we care about high achievement. We want our students and our faculty and staff and leadership team to achieve at the highest levels with the gifts that God's given them. Our strategy to get there. I think I already did that. I think I went back a spot somehow. All right, here's some, here's some football players. We're looking forward. If you don't know, the NIAA is still saying that those of us who play high school sports and athletics and middle school will follow suit, get to start on January 2nd. And so we're very much looking forward to having kids uh, staying after school in athletics. Just a little bit about our students. I always say that we get great kids from great families. I mean, that's why Faith Lutheran works, because we combine them with great teachers. That's really where magic happens at, at any good school and certainly here at Faith Lutheran. This year we have kids from an eye-popping 65 zip codes. I honestly only thought there were 64 zip codes in the entire Las Vegas Valley, but I think we've added one in the southwest. And so we have kids coming from every possible zip code uh, in, the, in, in the valley to come to school here at Faith Lutheran. I'm very proud of that. We're the largest school in, uh, largest private school in Nevada, and we're the largest private school in the history of this great state. And we're very, very proud of that. Our students this year come from 132 different feeder schools. So they come from charter schools, they come from public schools, and they come from Christian schools, and they come from non-sectarian private schools. And so we're just really excited to see that real diverse array of kids uh, that come our way from their feeder schools. Our students come from 122 different churches, uh, largely Christian, although you'll see in a graph I'm going to share shortly. Maybe I can do that right now. Oh, here's our race. Let's, let's do that first. So you can kind of get a, an idea of the diversity of uh, our student body, 60% white, 
were 18% declined that question, 5% multiracial, 4% black, 5% Asian, 5% Hispanic, 1% Pacific Islander. What I like to tell people is when I look at the skin color, the beautiful skin color of the kids that go to the school, I say that is exactly what heaven's going to look like. And so I'm, I'm just proud of all of the types of kids that, that we get to serve on a daily basis. This is always an interesting one to me uh, because in private schools nationwide, you, you typically see schools with more females than males. More slightly, I think there's a 50 different, uh, 50 student difference between male and female, but that's the gender of our student body. And then here is our, our church body affiliation. As I said, they come from more than 100 different churches, but you can see that our largest uh, group is, is unchurched. So there may be plenty of you on this call who don't have a church home right now. And so that's really an exciting thing for us uh, to get to share Jesus with, with your sons and daughters here at, at Faith Lutheran. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, here's kids in orchestra again. They, they, had, they couldn't do their uh, performances this fall, so they're, they're, doing, uh, they're taping them and doing virtual events. But we're looking forward to having the arts back uh, with live audiences very, very quickly. A couple of highlights. You know, I, I talk about this robust, challenging curriculum. Here are some classes that you can take in middle school at Faith Lutheran. You can take honors geometry, which for, for me was a sophomore level class when I was in high school, but you can take honors geometry, you can take dance, you can take pre-STEM science classes, you can take guitar, you can take robotics, you can take game programming, learning how to uh, program games, a cyber defense, right? The greatest threat our country has is not somebody dropping a nuclear bomb on us, it's, it's people hacking into our systems. And so we teach that both defending and learning how to hack, even in middle school. We have greenhouse agriculture, we have musical theater, we have robotics. And so the, the, the middle school curriculum is just so robust. At the high school level, now understand that your son or daughter will only get to take eight classes a year. So if you end up deciding to come here sometime this spring, you're going to pick your eight classes in high school. They will have 191 completely different classes from which to choose. It's absolutely mind numbing. You only go to high school four years, you get to take 32 of those classes and, and, and there are 191. It's almost frustrating because there's so many cool things here to take that kids don't have the time to do it. I just jotted down some, some cool classes I think that we offer in high school. Show choir, entrepreneurship, CAD, ballroom dancing, electronic music production, performance and sports psychology, hospitality and tourism management, filmmaking, 3D animation and visual effects, investigative reporting, criminal justice, mixed martial arts. Yes, we teach MMA here as a PE credit. Saber metrics, which is the mathematical analysis of sports. If you're a major league baseball fan, you understand the different stats they're using now. So our kids learn how to code in SQL in there. They learn in intermediate stats, and then they learn about the game of baseball so that people know there's a difference between a single and a walk, for an example. Molecular genetics, uh, architecture, greenhouse botany. And I think we have 22 AP classes here, 22 AP classes, which if you get a three or better, you're gonna get college credit for it. So I'm just really, really proud of that. At the high school level, we have a conservatory of the fine arts. So kids can dance all day long. They can do 2D and 3D art. They can do musical theater, choirs, bands, orchestra. It's, it's phenomenal. Then we have seven academies. We have uh, the Academy of Hospitality and Tourism. We have the STEM Academy, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. We have the uh, Justice and Advocacy, our pre-law program. We have something called Christ Academy, where those kids who want to be, like, who's going to be the next pastor? Who's going to be the next Christian teacher? Who's going to be the next worship leader and musician in a church? And so those kids, we have an academy uh, for them. We have uh, the Academy of Business and Entrepreneurship, you know, for kids who want to study business. Um, I feel like I'm missing one. Uh, oh, we just launched, and this is super cool. We launched the Odor Aviation Academy. So we have a flight school now. We just got 10 simulators in, so kids are going to be able to get some of their flying hours right here on campus and not even have to go to the airport. But it's really cool. And so I just tell you that to say I, I believe the, the uh, curriculum is beyond robust and, and probably beyond challenging for some of these kids. As I said earlier, we have unrivaled after-school activities. There's just everything going on here from 3 o'clock to 5 o'clock clock. It's totally cool. First class facilities, I think, I, I really regret that you can't be here tonight, but trust me, we get this COVID behind us and we have guests on campus. We would be honored uh, to give you a tour and really get to know you and show you kind of the cool spaces and places that we have here. And then finally, listen, all the cool programs, all the cool sports, all the cool arts, all the cool classes, all the nice buildings, that is not what makes Faith Lutheran special. What makes it special is the people. And it really starts with our faculty and staff. And I'm just fiercely proud of them and the love that they have for middle school and high school kids. Real quickly, and I'll shut up here in two minutes. 
I really believe the best is yet to come. I always tell our board of directors, I say, listen, I am fiercely proud of the 42 year history of this school, but I sit here with great certainty that our best years are still ahead of us. Some of the building that's gonna come with that is, some of this will be on this new property on which I'm sitting right now is a tennis court, a complex with 10 different courts. We certainly wanna beef up increased financial aid. We want, again, our, our mission statement is everyone prepared, everyone saved. It's not rich kids prepared, rich kids saved. And so we give out about $1.5 million in financial aid already. And I wanna to continue to drive that number up to help all of God's kids go here. We were going to build a STEM building on, on this side of the street. We were going to either build an aquatic center or an ice arena. You may know we're the only middle school and we're the only high school in the state of Nevada who has hockey teams. And so now that hockey's become so huge with the Golden Knights, now we're starting to think, do we build the aquatic center or should we build a hockey arena? But those are a few years down the road, unless you know somebody who wants to give me $15 million tomorrow, I'd be happy to chat with them. We have portable buildings on the far west side of our, our uh, campus, and we want to get those knocked down and, and get a two-story classroom building built there. We want to build an aviation room. Currently, that academy is housed in the library. We just started it this fall. We want to build a, a separate cool room for them uh, next year. Ultimately, we want to build a black box theater. Those of you in the arts know how important those are. And then we're $28 million in debt. So that's something that the board and I will want to do is uh, you know take a look at knocking the debt down. So there's a drinking out of a fire hose from a guy that probably talks way too fast, but I get pretty stoked when I talk about Faith Lutheran. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of kind of where we've been, kind of where we are and where we're headed. And I'll turn it back over to Mai and see if we have any questions or if she has any comments she'd like to make. Thank you, Dr. Boog. Absolutely. Um, thank you so much for sharing. And you're right, it is a little bit drinking out of a fire hose uh, might feel like at times. And honestly, sometimes throughout the admissions process um, for some families, it could feel like you're getting information overload. And so I want to just reiterate one more time that um, this admission process with us here at Faith Lutheran doesn't have to be a scary one. It should be a calm process, a fun process for you and your child um, to apply to the school and, and come here. Um, you know, as we're um, transitioning to this Q&A time, I was a reminder, please submit your questions. We have one question right now, which um, we will get to, Christine, don't worry. Um, but I want to remind you, in order to submit your Q&A question, hover over the bottom section of your screen to the Q&A um, boxes, click on it, and you can type in your question and submit um, any questions you have for Dr. Book specifically about what he spoke about tonight. Um, and again, admissions questions in regards to the process, um, many of that uh, you can find on our website. However, um, if you have some general questions that you think might help the whole group here tonight, um, and we have over 60 people here joining us, um, you know, please submit your questions for us and we'd love to answer them. Um, while we're waiting for some questions to come in, um, like I was saying, our admissions office here at Faith Lutheran Middle School and High School, we're here to serve you. And so first and foremost, we want to offer you fantastic customer service. Um, no question is a bad question. Um, I've been in admissions for almost seven years now, and I've heard just about everything. And so please connect with us and, and know that we, we just want to help you. Um, the admissions process should not be a scary one. Um, Faith Lutheran is not a scary private school. Uh, we're a family here. We call ourselves the Faith family. And so what that means is that, um, you know, we want to make sure that the questions you have for your individual child gets answered and that your child feels welcomed and feels like they have a place at the school. And so a lot of the journey of admissions is finding out, well, what programs do you have and how does that connect with my child? Um, and like Dr. Book mentioned, once we can get further along here in the fall and maybe open up the school a bit more, uh, we'll open up our campus tours again to have those in person. And during those campus tours, you can really get to know your child and your family, as well as possibly um, some shadow days in the spring. Um, and so we can hopefully look forward to that starting in the new year. Um, also, the admissions process, again, all of it is online. And so you have all the resources and all the steps for you provided, but we know sometimes it can be a little tricky uh, for folks, especially when it comes to using technology. And so just know that we're open to receiving um, documents in such and other ways. Just give us a call, email us, and we'll help you out the best that we can. Okay, it looks like we have some questions coming in. And so um, let's see here. These are awesome questions, awesome questions. Okay, uh, one of the first questions here is what is the acceptance rate? And that's a good general question that I think I'd love to address for both middle school and high school. Our acceptance rate is honestly up in the high 90s. Um, it's quite rare that we will turn away a student. 
Um, what I tell families is the fact that, you know, what we're looking for in a student is A, a student with solid grades. And, and I say solid meaning, you know, we're not looking for perfect, um, only A plus students. Dr. Book mentioned this school has everyone in the mission statement twice, right? Um, we have students that are rocking across, off the chart GPAs and um, students that struggle and have learning challenges but are rocking it on our stage. You know, we're not looking for your perfect child and perfect grades. We want to see a child that is succeeding in their capacity, is trying hard, is uh, contributing to the classroom, um, that has good recommendations on the academic side that their teacher can point and say, yes, they're trying and putting forth a good effort. Um, for some students that have really struggle in academics, sometimes we celebrate C's and, and that's okay because we know that student is really putting in that effort, you know, um, and, and so we want to meet your child where they're at. And so please don't be worried. If we ever have a question academically about a student's grades or what we might see off of testing, we're going to work with you individually and talk to you about that. The second thing we really look for is behavior. Um, that's why we request recommendation forms. And so we want to see good behavior, a student that has positive relationships with his uh, teachers and with her uh, fellow classmates, um, and that has a general uh, positive behavior that contributes to their school, um, that they enjoy school. And the third really requirement that we look for is a student that wants to attend Faith Lutheran. Uh, more often than not, we sometimes get kids that come into and it's the final step in the interview and all of a sudden they say, I don't want to come here. And, and that's a funny conversation to have with parents, but you know, it, it's not one that you know, I, I miss every year. So just know that we want the student to have a desire to come to school. It's hard to drag a student in and force them to come. And so those are the three things we look for when it comes to the acceptance. Um, Paul V asks, when is it a good time to apply for the fall 2021 eighth grade class? Um, so let's see here, we're in, our, uh, we're in the application process right now. And so Paul, to answer your question, October is a great time to start and submit your application because it's free uh, for the upcoming school year for 2021, 2022. And so you do that by going to our school website. And as long as you submit that application and create your portal um, and log in, um, in October, the application will be free and you can work throughout the following months in November and December and January to submit the remaining documents that are required. And so now is a good time to apply. Um, let's see here. Um, Christine, you asked about uh, tuition and discounts. Um, as a reminder, um, all of the information about tuition and, and how that works and how our financial aid program works, where one in five of our families utilize our financial assistance, that can be found um, on the virtual preview page. There's a wonderful PowerPoint and video recorded by our CFO, Al Siciliano. Um, but to answer your question, um, there is not actually a student discount if you have siblings, but there's a slight discount on our registration fee. And so that can be further explained in that PowerPoint and, and um, video for you. Um, let's see here. Am I going too quick, Mr. Orr? No, you're fine. <laughs> We're doing okay. <laughs> yeah, my, let, me hit, let me hit the drug testing. Uh, we, sure. we used to drug test randomly 25 kids a month um sixth grade through 12th grade but but the the sixth grade data has been useless we've never once had a, a positive drug test and so we put in every high school kid twice and every seventh and eighth grader in once and we're now doing 50 kids a month totally random uh we alternate between hair and urine and on that first offense they're not kicked out of school we that first offense is we deal with you as a family and with your son or daughter and really try to get them the help that they want and then at your dime they're drug tested on your dime uh, once a month for the next 12 months if they have a second drug test at that point uh, then we invite them to pursue their educational objectives elsewhere but if they uh, stay clean for a year then then they're off uh, drug probation Thank you, Dr. Booth. I know it can be an interesting topic, but um, if you have further questions about that, um, it's something that we see as a very positive um, way to help our school culture. At many times, sometimes students feel the peer pressure amongst their peers um, to engage in risky behaviors, but uh, a lot of our students can say, you know what, my school drug tests, and so I'm not gonna engage in this with you. And so we actually see it having a really positive effect for those students that want to make good choices, and we can help support those students do that. Um, let's see here. Another question we have is um, class sizes for grade levels. Um, and so um, our school in total uh, has about 1,900 students currently. That breaks down to about 1,150 or so um, in our high school and then um, just under 800 students in the middle school. Um, and so in individual classes, 
this year is just completely different with a 50% capacity and such. And so I'm going to give you numbers uh, pre-COVID. <laughs> um, you know, last school year, we were looking at around 230 or so sixth grade students for that incoming class. In seventh and eighth grade, we currently sit or typically sit around 250 to 280 um, in the seventh grade class and in the eighth grade class. So 250 maybe in the seventh grade, 280 and maybe the eighth grade. And then in the high school, it can range anywhere from 280 to 350, depending on the class in the school year. I think our current largest class, Dr. Book, is our seniors this yep. year, right? Yep. They're our largest class. And so last year we graduated around 255 seniors um, for the class of 2020. And so my, if, if you're interested in about just actual class sizes, our, our middle school averages about 23 kids per class. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I wish they were all at 25, uh, but our middle school average is about, tw I think 23 one uh, last year. And again, th this year is different again, because of COVID we're only, we're hybrid and we only have half the kids here right now. And then high school is about 21.5. So at least you have kind of an average class size. Absolutely. And, um, and Paul, that is a funny comment. No, the parents do not. <laughs> well done, Paul. Um, yeah. And so, um, and to further comment on the average class size, you know, we've truly seen average class size of 23. So on any given day in a normal school, typical year, you could walk in a classroom and maybe see 28, 29 kids in a classroom, but you could also walk into a classroom and see 11. And so it really depends on the class, the time period, the block, um, what elective it is. Uh, my husband teaches uh, a class that's a pretty general class for almost uh, every single high school student takes and he has one class with 29 kids and he has one class with I think 21 kids and so it truly is a range um, depending on. Let's see here. Um, let's see. The Nord family asks how many academies can a student belong to and be successful? That is a great question. We have some overachievers in our high school that's for sure. I think our high school principal's son Micah he was in three academies, if I remember correctly. He somehow arranged his class schedule just perfectly to graduate with an endorsement from the JNA, from the STEM Academy, and he's also part of the Fine Arts Conservatory. So to answer your question, Nord family, it is possible your child's going to be very busy and they have to most likely take some online classes or some summer classes um, to stay on top of their schedule and to meet college requirements and graduation requirements. Um, yes. Could I add something there? Here's what I love about those academies. You do not have to be in any of those academies to take academy classes. So to me, I would take an entrepreneurship class. I'd maybe take a tap dance class. I would take a, you know, a hospitality class. You do not have to be in those academies to take advantage of that curriculum. Absolutely, that's a very good point. And so many of the students, what they do is they'll just explore all those different fields through their electives. And maybe by the end of their, or the middle of their sophomore year, they realize, oh, I actually do want to apply for an academy and actually come in. And as a reminder, the academies are for our high school students, but middle school students can still explore all those different areas or most of those different areas through their electives, like robotics and cyber defense and um, a broadcasting class, right? Let's see here. Um, Ms. Hickman asks, are accelerated classes offered for middle school students? Yes, there are. Um, middle school students can um, take accelerated courses in a few different subjects. Um, in mathematics, they're actually um, tested and put on a specific math track that has acceleration starting in sixth grade. Um, but then in seventh and eighth grade, if a student uh, continues to do well throughout the sixth grade year, getting A's in their classes, they can be considered for accelerated classes in English, history, and the sciences as well. And so for example, a sixth grade student, if they get an A in English, they can actually request to take accelerated English uh, 7 or advanced English 7 for the seventh grade year. And so it's based on a prerequisite. Um, you don't have to get in on a track specifically in sixth grade except for math. And even then, the teachers will test and help evaluate. And so students can move along in that as they move on through middle school. Let's see here. Another question. How accessible are counselors for middle school students? That's fantastic. And I'm going to actually overarch this and say how accessible are counselors for all of our students. Um, we have six full-time counselors that work at our school and actually seven if you count one of our um, uh, admin that are working on his counseling degree. And um, the middle school students specifically can work with uh, Mrs. Courtney Burns, who's our director of middle school counseling. Dr. Carl Knorr works specifically with our sixth graders. Um, and then for social and emotional wellness, the students can see any counselor that they feel most comfortable with. And so accessibility is 
great. They, they can notify a teacher and say, I really need to talk with someone today. They can email our counselors and set up an appointment. A parent can reach out and say, you know what, our, my, my son or daughter mentioned this at home. Can you please check in on them? Um, I was going to say, Dr. Book or John, maybe you can talk about how the past few weeks we've been, we've been doing our surveys, right? Now we've been taking in some data to help support um, our students, right? Right. Yeah, we, yeah, we, I mean, we're constantly evaluating uh, all of our various programs here at Faith Lutheran, and we're just we're we're a very data driven uh, institution, and so you will see uh, surveys going out to families, and you'll see sur we survey our own employees and faculty, and we survey um, our students, and so we just want to we just have a constant drive uh, to get better at our craft and what we do, and we and we seek and value the input from uh, from um, all constituents here at Faith Lutheran. Absolutely. And, and one of those surveys, you know, we do a social emotional survey, just a quick check in with students to say, hey, how are you doing? Is there things that we can help you with? And our counselors can monitor that and, and flag students that need some extra support, call them in and just have conversations with them and, and really help meet them and meet their needs. Um, let's see here. These are all fantastic questions here. Based on the data that you've displayed, this is a question from Mr. Walters and Dr. Book. I think this is a question for you. Based on the data that we've displayed, it seems like we have 40% um, between diverse and non-diverse uh, students. Is this typical and how is this being addressed? Um, Kevin, you come from a very diverse city and this is very important to your family. This is a great question. I think the beautiful uh, part of what I've seen at Faith Lutheran is every year diversity numbers tick up, which is awesome because again, our mission statement is everyone prepared, everyone saved. And so I think everybody knows in this valley uh, that we are a school that welcomes all of God's kids. And so I think that word's getting out. I think there's a real family culture here uh, where kids know they're loved and accepted and protected and get a voice. And uh, we've done some things after this summer, uh, to be candid with you, that we hadn't done before. And that is... We've hired, we've had some diversity speakers for our own faculty and staff. We have some book studies going on, one being led that I attend on Friday mornings at 630 called The Third Option, written by an African-American pastor to really have people start to dialogue about race. We've hired an African-American consultant who is a counselor at Crystal Ray High School here in town, and he's helping lead our student body. We're getting some, just some good data from those kids. Do, do all of our kids feel like they have a voice? Do they all feel safe? You know, we, we just assume that they do, but we've really never dug in. And so I think this summer has been good for us here at Faith that we weren't just going to be that school that sent out a one-time statement and then washed our hands of it and thought it was, you know, we solved all the world's problems. And so I'm very proud of the proactive stance we've made, uh, but just know that we're always seeking to, uh, you know, attract and retain the best faculty and staff, regardless of color. We're looking to, to get great kids on this campus that we've been blessed so far uh, for 42 years uh, with kids of, of every possible race and ethnicity. And so uh, we, we will continue to make that a priority. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Great let's see here. Um, more questions. So many good ones. Um, this is a question about communication, which I think is important. How do we communicate with our parents? How do parents communicate with our faculty and staff? Um, to answer your question, um, we communicate a lot through email and through um, technology to our parents and communication is constant. Sometimes it does feel like communication overload a little bit, but as a parent, um, you work through a school portal called Crusader Connect. And through that school portal, you have a great access to your kids' grades, attendance, and to their teachers. You can even see homework assignments, and you can see when things are due, um, and you can see um, what they've been learning in class that day. And all of our teachers have email, and all of our students have email as well. And so a lot of email communication can happen. Um, and if you'd like to schedule in-person appointments, that can happen as well. But um, something that we really encourage, especially and, and try to help facilitate for, for new middle school students, is for the student to advocate for themselves. And so a lot of times you might see a parent reaching out at first, but that teacher might say, hey, Sam, I got an email from your parent saying you had a question about this. I'm going to talk to you about it in class. And why don't you tell your parent when you get home that we talked about this? Or, hey, Sam, I got your parent email. When you have a question later on, email me yourself. So we want to tell that student to advocate for themselves and encourage them as they start preparing for high school. Um, and so that's really how the communication is. It's pretty open. Now, in regards to parent access on campus, because this is kind of a follow-up question I get, our campus is pretty closed during the day so that students can really focus in with their teachers and with their fellow peers. And so you don't see a lot of, um, you know, parent teacher assistance or, or parent present on campus during the school day. But that does not mean our parents are not involved. We have 
huge parent presence in our extracurriculars um, and around the school and after school. Um, and so just know that during the school day, you know, we really want our students to be able to focus on their time with their teachers. Um, and the lines of, again, some more student and teacher things. Um, you know, what is the average amount of homework sent home? It really depends on your student. Um, it's one of those things where I would say anecdotally, um, students and parents have told me they have about an hour to an hour and a half um, of homework a night. If you're in more advanced courses, um, you might see a little bit more homework. A lot of times teachers, because we run what's called a block schedule, they'll allow students to start their homework uh, during the class period. And then, so they have any questions they can ask the teacher before they go home. Um, and, but again, it depends on your student. Some kids take their time on their homework and something that takes one kid 30 minutes can take an hour. So um, it truly depends, but our counselors are always wanting to hear if you feel like it's a struggle or going too quick. And so to try to see and work with the teacher on how we can better support your student through that. Um, and again, it could vary between middle school and high school. Um, Paul, if your student is a high school student, um, then if they're in a lot of AP and advanced and honors classes, you might see three to four hours a night of homework depending on what they have. So let's see here. More questions. Um, how do the school schedules work between having the middle school run uh, with the high school? Do they overlap? Um, that's a great question. We have quite a few students on campus during the school day and, um, and so our middle school and high school run on different bell schedules. Uh, to give you a quick example, our high school students start their day at 740 in the morning and end their day at 240 in the afternoon. And so they're in class uh, when all of the middle school students then um, come into uh, school. And so at 815, when your middle schooler starts, um, they uh, will just be the only ones walking in from the parking lot. So high school's already in their class session. Because the start times are staggered, that means the rest of the school day with the bell schedules and passing periods, that's staggered as well. Um, and so you don't have to worry about, um, you know, students all in the hallway at the same time. Sometimes, depending on the school day, maybe the middle school has an assembly that overlaps with the high school passing period. You'll see some overlap happen. But um, just to reassure you, there's never been a negative um, incident between middle school and high school student. Many of our high school students have younger siblings in the middle school and vice versa. And so actually it's pretty fun to see that interaction happen where the high school kid will sit, wave, you know, at the middle school kids or the middle school kids say, hey, I remember you from that show I watched and, and so on and so forth. So um, that's how the schedules um, come together uh, on that. Let's see here, um, more questions. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, great question, Kim. When are uh, applicants notified when they've been accepted? And so uh, applicants that start now and finish up the process, meaning finish with that interview and they're done with their testing, you get here as early as February um, 1st, and then we'll have a second round of acceptances uh, March 1st. Um, and sometimes we'll, we'll change that and move that date up depending on how many applicants we actually have. And so just know that, um, um, starting February 1st is usually when we start to let families know um, if they've been accepted to the school. Okay, um, let's see here. Um, Heather, your daughter's asking about uh, tutoring, and that's a great question for all students. Um, our tutoring uh, services and just overall academic support is fantastic. Um, first and foremost, um, in our school portal, your students will actually have access to 24-7 chat tutoring available for um, almost every single subject. So let's say they have a science question. They can chat with a live tutor, not necessarily one of our teachers, but through a, a service that we pay for, and they can get uh, questions answered right away. A student could submit a, an essay for the English class early in the week and have that returned to them to turn in later on uh, through our tutoring um, portal. Uh, along with that, we offer um, teacher um, office hours that every teacher has where students should come in during that designated time to ask and work with that teacher one on one. Um, in the high school and middle school, there's also a time called advisory. And during the advisory time period, uh, the students have the ability to go to different teachers um, and ask their questions for their homework and for uh, maybe um, schoolwork that they've done and classes, um, lectures that they've had. Um, Along with that, um, usually we have um, after school math and science tutoring, that's free. Um, that's led by our honors math and science students and open to all kids to come after school to receive free math and science tutoring. Um, and so that kind of just scrapes the surface 
covers actually a lot of the tutoring, um, but that's, that's usually where students will start. I hope that answers your question. Um, let's see here. Um, okay. Um, it looks like we have a question about, um, oh, bullying. That's a fantastic question. Paul, you're asking great questions tonight. Thank you. <laughs> so in regards to bullying, I know that's always a big question on a lot of parents' hearts. Um, and it's a big, pretty hot topic um, question. Um, I think our approach to it is this. Um, if a student reports that they uh, feel like they're being bullied or they report, a lot of times students will self-report um, or, or sorry, report for their peers, meaning, hey, my friend just went through this and she's too scared to talk to someone, um, or hey, I saw this happen. Um, our counselors and our administrators will, will get on that right away and, and open an investigation. And that word sounds kind of scary, but that simply means they're gonna call that student down and say, hey, um, what's going on? Is everything okay? You know, we heard about this happening um, and, and we wanna make sure and, and hear from you what's going on. Um, and so they'll bring them in to talk with them. If the situation does merit um, further questions, they'll bring in the students that are involved and, and get the, the whole picture, um, you know, and, and try to actually get to the bottom of things, right? We, we don't like to leave those situations unaddressed. Um, something though that is important that the counselors really um, want to help students distinguish between is, is what is the difference between bullying and social drama? Um, you know, unfortunately in middle school, this happens often where a student say, will say, you know what, these girls or these guys, they don't want to be my friend anymore and I feel like I'm being bullied. Well, you know, we have to ask that question. Is it bullying or is it social drama where a situation happened and things just need to be talked out? Um, you know, and, and so we take the time to coach and mentor students through that process. Um, if you have further questions about that, I know that's very scraping the surface, but um, you know, Paul, you asked if there are policy that kids have to sign to. Um, not necessarily they sign or make an agreement, but you know, our students overall, we have a culture of respect. Um, and so I know we talk about that a lot in our assemblies and uh, amongst uh, students uh, and teachers hold students to that standard. Um, and so uh, something that we actually have parents sign though is a community um, safety standard. Um, and so that, that's something, that's the only thing I would say we have a policy to sign to. Right, Dr. Mr. Orr, you're a parent. <laughs> yeah. We have a community um, parent. When, yeah, when you, when you, when you uh, we have a couple of things. When you, when you sign your contract as enrollment, you're obviously just agreeing to all the policies and, and procedures that are in the parent and student handbook, that, that kind of stuff. And then, um, and then we also have a, a safe community pledge that we offer and for people to sign. Um, and then if you want to, uh, if you want to check by signing that you're, you're saying, hey, we, we agree to all these things about, uh, you know, what, you know, what is what happens inside of our home and, and what type of, you know, social environment we, we, can, we have access to or we do at our house and we agree to that. And so you can always check that list too to say, hey, it might, I'm new to here. My kid wants to go hang out at this particular family and it, you can, you can see if they have signed the uh, safe community pledge as well. So that's an opt in optional thing for our families. Um, Absolutely. There. Okay, let's see. I know we have some more questions and I want to make sure we respect your time as well. And so we're getting close to that seven o'clock hour, but I'll try to go fast um, and make sure. Let's see here. How do we support an out-of-state parent? Um, you're out of state, but you wish to remain involved. Um, you know, we, we actually have that happen quite often. Um, and, and that happens and comes to play with our international students as well. Um, and so if you're a parent that lives out of state and you have um, you know, legal custody over your student and you want that open communication, that student portal, Crusader Connect, is gonna be your main source of information to stay involved, to look at progress, homework, um, report cards, et cetera. That's gonna be a huge, great hub of information. And again, full access to teacher emails um, that you can communicate uh, with your teachers over that way. You know, we have a lot of parents that are deployed that, that wanna check in on things. And so they can look in that student portal and that parent portal to access all that information. I joke with parents that you could see live if your parents made it to class on time, you know, if you want to check attendance. Um, and so that parent portal, I think, will be your main um, source of information. Um, let's see here. How do we acclimate and orient um, our sixth graders into the school? Um, we do a fantastic job of this. Our counselor, Dr. Carl Knorr, his job is to take those sixth graders that come from over 70 different elementary schools and help them 
come together as a unit as sixth grade. Um, you know, when you start in sixth grade, everyone is new. No one has been to our school, Faith Lutheran Middle School and High School, ever before. Uh, and so when you start in sixth grade, it's a great time. We have um, orientation day specifically for just sixth graders at the beginning of the school year, where they're the only ones on campus to help walk through their schedule. And then throughout the rest of the time, Dr. Kenora will meet individually with students and then other groups, and then also set up some fun socialization um, activities for them to do um, to help sixth graders come into the school. Um, and then the teachers are very good about supporting that transition as well. Um, but we definitely don't leave sixth graders hanging. It's a, it's a supported process. Um, let's see here. Um, hockey opportunities for girls. You know, in uh, our first year, we did have a student, I think, um, but as she transitioned into the high school then, the level of play was starting getting more intense. Um, and so I don't think they, the coaches allowed her to play into the high school program. Um, but for the 14U team, I think that is something of an opportunity, but that is not my college admissions. And that's a great question, um, Heather, that uh, we can give you the coach's email for hockey to answer. Let's see, are there any milestone celebrations for middle school? Yes, um, we did a wonderful drive through eighth grade graduation this past fall, I mean, past spring, sorry, but um, our eighth graders typically get their own um, graduation um, ceremony that we have in our school gyms. And so we do celebrate those milestones and we do celebrate the milestone, of course, for high school graduation. And if you didn't know, we had our high school graduation this past May at the Las Vegas Speedway. Um, and so that was a very unique and fun thing for us to do as a school. Um, let's see you here. To, I can take Kevin's question if you want. Yes, please. Um, Kevin's sure. question asked about COVID and change student interaction and learning. And so, yes, Mr. Orr is going to be perfect for that. Right. I mean, uh, so so COVID has just been obviously a changing landscape for for everybody uh, here at, uh, at Faith Lutheran and in the in the country and the world. And so uh, we've been doing. A, I think we've been doing a very good job navigating those waters in this constantly changing environment. Um, obviously, last spring uh, we had to go to a fully uh, online asynchronous model uh, subsidized with some some live Zoom interactions with our teachers. Um, but specifically this year, um, we are in a we're in a live hybrid model, which means half of our students are on campus and half of our students are at home, but they're all attending their schedules in a normal live manner um, and so half of them are, are zooming in from home and half of them are sitting in the classroom live and that's created some uh, interesting challenges for our teachers and for our students both um, but we believe that it's been it's been a very successful solution um, but not without its faults I mean we've had uh, you know increased stress on both the student and teacher levels and uh, and we're constantly evaluating those types of things but um, but uh, to, to be able to interact with our students in a live fashion we felt was a very was 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 the best uh, uh solution for for those students and and we're continuing to to move forward with that but again we're always uh we're always looking and navigating and and evaluating the landscape to make sure that we're doing the best possible job to uh to be able to um to engage and to interact and, and to and to teach those students yeah absolutely and i was gonna say you know um it's something that we're constantly evaluating right mr or we we ultimately want what's best for the student and, and we're learning as we go because, you know, who has gone through education in a pandemic before? <laughs> Not us, <laughs> but everyone's learning. And I think something some, from an outside office standpoint, you know, in admissions, we don't really work with the curriculum and we're not teaching on it every day. But I like to note that our administrators and our teachers and our counselors have been so flexible to really meet students where they're at and, and to try to make sure we're catching those students that are maybe struggling with that online platform and, and, and trying to find unique ways to get kids connected still. Um, it's an evolving process as we continue on and, and we know it's a unique year. Um, let's see here. I just want to go over and I, I, I'm pretty sure we've covered almost all the questions. You know, we, we, I touched on parent involvement, um, but someone asked how involved are parents? And I would like to say as involved as you'd like to be. You know, some private schools have parent involvement requirements. Some have, um, I'll even say financial commitments besides tuition. Here at Faith Lutheran, you know, you're committed to your tuition, but in regards to parent involvement, we know that some like to be very involved and we know that some are just so busy and, and that's okay. Um, and so you can be involved and we see a lot of parents being involved mainly in their kids' extracurricular activities um, and, and being involved there. Um, and so um, let's see here. I think we've answered all of them. John, do you see any questions that I might've missed? Um, yeah, I'll answer the, uh, Kim just asked about our college counselors and the experience oh. applying to Canada. Uh, yes, uh, our, we have students that have applied and been to all, um, all, all over the world. Um, I know of a couple that are in the UK right now specifically. Um, 
and uh, we've had students go to Canada um, for sure, and um, and and all all sorts of places. So our, our college councils are very well versed in uh, the application process for for all um, for all universities, not just uh, the U.S. but also internationally as well. Uh, in fact, um, in fact, uh, our, our our head college counselor, uh, Mr. Chilman, has actually traveled overseas and visited universities in. Um, um, he went to other Dubai colleges. recently. Yeah, he was recently in Dubai, and I, he had plans or is planning to go to the UK as well. So, yeah. and by recently, I mean last school year. Yeah, <laughs> there was no traveling to Dubai in the past. Yeah, it was pre pre COVID traveling. Pre COVID traveling. <laughs> yeah, let's see here. Oh, Stephanie, thank you so much for your comment. Um, what's the school's social agenda? Um, intolerance, open communication for a school to be in academics. Um, I, I completely understand your question, Stephanie. And, you know, our school um, being in the culture and the nature of that we are and, and the um, overall network that we're connected to, I would say, Stephanie, we're going to probably main very focus on academics um, and, and the school community and, and, our, and our school's community, meeting the needs of our specific students. Um, you know, we know there's a lot happening in the world when it comes to everything that's happening in the media and, and socially and, and politically, um, but we're going to really focus in on what's happening at Faith Lutheran, what's happening with our Faith Lutheran students that are enrolled at our school, um, how do we meet our family's needs, and, and it might come up in school and classroom discussions, um, but you know we really want to make keep the focus on the students and what their needs are. Um, and so I, I know that's a very general way to answer that question. I think Stephanie, I would like to maybe answer that question for you in a more personal um, uh, way if, if you'd like. Um, but uh, we know it's an interesting time in our world right now where a lot of it is coming up. And, and you know, I think it also depends on the age and the age appropriateness as well. You know, for some of our younger students, you're not gonna be discussing certain issues, but for our high school students, um, you bet they're going to be talking about politics in their government classes and in their history classes. Um, and, and, and those topics might come up. It is a, a protocol for our teachers. You know, it's not their job to push their own personal agenda. You know, our teachers keep things, I don't know, Mr. Orr, you could probably talk about that, but um, we want our teachers not to get in the way of what they're teaching, right? And so um, we want to make sure that we keep that environment open and comfortable um, for many of the kids there. Let's see here. Um, Kim, thank you for your comment <laughs> about our webinar. This is something new for us, and so I'm glad that um, the information's been good for you. Um, let's see here, parents. Any other questions? You know, it's seven o'clock on the dot, and so, um, you know, as we're wrapping up, if I see any more questions come in, um, I want to reiterate some of those housekeeping items that we addressed at the beginning of the webinar. And so, remember, parents, um, you know, this is not the end. This is just the beginning. And so I encourage you, if this at all resonated with you and that piqued your interest in regards to Faith Lutheran, please apply and submit your application right now in the month of October. Remember, in the month of October, it's a free application. Um, after October, it will be a $50 application. Um, but remember to submit your application, create your parent portal now, and, and the rest of the application, like the documents and, and such can come after. But that application needs to be submitted in October. And our website has all the information on how to do that. Um, the other reminder, of course, is to watch those videos on our uh, virtual preview night page. Um, I think my favorite video is one of the ones of sixth graders, our current sixth graders, um, talking about their experience. We have a student that came from Challenger sharing about her experience, a student that came from Cornerstone Christian, another student that um, started with us from Vasiliadis. And so you get to hear from those sixth graders on how their school year has been so far. Um, there's another great interview between um, some of our teachers, and, and you might see me in some of the videos giving a campus tour um, that I recorded uh, a little bit over the quarantine. And so please check those videos out and share them, um, spread them around with your friends and family, um, and get to know our school uh, through those videos. Um, let's see here, John. I don't see any other nope, questions. It's, uh, it's been an hour, so I think it's time to about wrap that up. Yeah. It's great. Well, Thank you, everybody, for attending. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time tonight, parents and students. We here at Faith Lutheran pray that you continue to have a safe and healthy time um, with your family. Uh, please reach out to us, um, visit our school's website, email us, call us, um, and we are here for you. Have a wonderful night and, and God's blessings on your night. Thank you so much. <laughs>